Hey everyone, welcome to Skills Build Training YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about how to download and install Microsoft SQL or SQL Server and Management Studio. My name is Salha and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really really fast. SQL is a database system which allows us to store databases and tables. But if you want to write SQL statements to retrieve, store, edit or manipulate the data in the database, you have to use the SQL Server Management Studio or other third party tools. In this video, I will show you how to download and install the Microsoft SQL Server 2019, which is the latest stable release of Microsoft SQL Server and Management Studio. Let's get started. Go to your favorite browser and write Microsoft SQL Server 2019 in your search bar and then hit enter. So the first link that you will see here, just click on that and it will take you to a page that looks something like this. This is the official website of Microsoft and from here you can download Microsoft SQL Server 2019 and the Management Studio, right? So here what you need to do is that you need to click on the download button, okay? So when you will click on the download button, you have two options here. One is the developer edition and the second one is the express edition. In the developer edition, you can only use it for testing purposes or experiment purposes, right? We cannot use it for any production purposes. When it comes to the express edition, we get 10 gigabytes of storage and one gigabyte of RAM and we can use it for production purposes as well. I will use the developer edition for demonstration purposes, but the process for both of them is exactly the same. So click on the download now and download the file from here to your local drive. I have already downloaded it. Now open your downloaded file where you have downloaded it and now double click on it. And now when I will click on yes, the installation process will begin. Here you will see three options. The first one is basic, the second one is custom, and the last one is download media. So in the download media, you can basically just, you know, download the setup files and you can install them later on some machine that you want to. Let's talk about basic and custom. In basic, we get all the necessary things which we need to start working with the Microsoft SQL Server. And if you are working for the first time with a Microsoft SQL Server, then you should go with the basic. In custom, you can choose the different options, which means you can install the thing which you want to install. I will click on basic and the license agreement page will appear. Click on accept and now it will ask for the installation location means where it would be installed. So you can browse your files and folders and give a specific location where you want to install. I would like to install it here. Now you can see that the installation process has begun. So now the file has been downloaded and the installation is in process or progress. So we should wait. Now we are done with the installation. Here we have four more options. The first item is the instance name. So this is basically your SQL or SQL server address and I'll just leave this as default. And the second thing here is the log, which means every time if you do something, the server will create a file and a log file will get saved in the directory. So basically it keeps track and record of what you do with the server and what's happening on it. And I will leave other things here as default as well. We are done here with the installation process. Now click on connect and a command prompt will open up like this. So here you will see some of the information on your command prompt related to the SQL server 
And if you do not see this information, it means your server has not been installed successfully. In that case, you might have to do the installation process from the scratch. As we are done with the SQL or SQL Server database installation, now we need to install the SQL Server Management Studio. For that purpose, go to your SQL Server prompt, which is opened already. From here, click on Install SSMS. It will take you to a web page of SQL Server Management Studio. From this page, we will download our SQL or SQL Server Management Studio and here is the link as you can see here. Click on Download SSMS. I have already downloaded it. So go ahead and double click on it. And when you will double click on it, it will give you a prompt uh, whether you want to install it or not. So click on Yes. And then it would open up a window something like this. On this window, you will be able to see the location and you can change the location if you want to. Okay, I would like to keep it the same. And after this, click on install. It will take some time to get installed. So after the installation process is done, you will see this message on your screen, which says setup complete. So close this window. Now go to your programs or click on the search bar and type SQL Server Management Studio. So just click on it. And if you do not see this icon on searching Microsoft SQL Server, then maybe your SQL Server has not been installed successfully and maybe it has got broken on the way when you were installing. As we were able to see this, it means that we have properly installed it. So now my SQL Server Management Studio has opened up. Here you will see the server name and in case you don't see it, click on the name and click on browse for more. So in the database engine folder, you will have the SQL or SQL server instances for you. So click on any of them and click on connect. It will connect you with your SQL server database. Let's open a new query here. So one way is that you go to file and then you go to new and from new you click on query with the current connection. Here you can open a new query. A page or you can say a window will open here like this. There is another way to open up this query window and that is basically you go here and click on new query and you will see a query window here. So if I write here select and then if I write here at and then I write here server name Okay, double at sign and then server name and now if I try to execute it, you can see that it will show you your server name. It has given us our server name which means that we are connected with the server and our management studio and server both are working absolutely fine. So now let me show you that how you can create a database in your SQL management studio. So for that purpose we have to write a query. So let's open a new query and in order to create a database, we will write create database and then the name of the database which could be cars, okay? So if I write here cars, it would create a database named as cars. So I have to run it, okay? I click on execute and now you can see that our database has been created successfully. As our database has been created, now we will use this database and in order to use this database, we can use this command. So I'll just write here use and then I would write here the name of the database, which in our case is cars essentially. So one good thing here that you need to keep in mind that in the SQL Server Management Studio, you cannot run all the commands at once. If you want to, you could do so. So the thing is that your selection really matters. So whatever query or whatever line or whatever lines you will select, only those lines will be executed, okay? So for example, now you can see that I have selected use cars, okay? Which is a database that we're trying to use and we want to execute only this line. So what we would do, we'd select it like this here you can see that in blue it has been selected and now if i would execute only this line will be executed 
So here you can see that now we have our database name here that we are using. The first database that you would create, it would be a master database. And here you can see that now, here we also have a database named as cars, right? So we are using our newly created database. So now let's go ahead and let's try to create a table in our database. So we have a cars database. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a table here named as cars info. So for that, we will write here, create table. And then I would write the name of the table. Um, I could give it like car info. And once I have done it, I'll put parentheses here. So first of all, in here, I can define different fields. So what is the related fields to the car? So first is like car uh, ID maybe, right? Which is a unique ID. So I will call it ID or I can also call it CID, uh, which means car ID. And the thing is that here I have integer, right? So integer means that the data type of the data field is integer which means that it cannot accept any other data type other than integer so i also need to make it a primary key because of course id is unique model name could be redundant other things could be redundant but the id is going to be unique so we also need to define a primary key the primary key is basically a unique value which never uh, repeats okay which is not redundant and using the primary key you can access any of the value uh, inside the database now the second field that we're going to define is the car name okay so let's say here i can write here c underscore name and then i need to define the data type which is essentially varchar and i give it a length of 20 so the length of the car name cannot exceed 20 characters right so then put a comma come to the next line now let's define another field let's call it car model or c model okay so yeah once we have that then um, of course it's also going to have a data type and the fourth value uh, we can say price okay so once we have price here and of course the price is going to be in float okay so uh, instead of integer i'll write here float and uh, we are all done here okay so now we have uh, basically written the structure of table successfully and now we need to execute it the code and then uh, the table will be created in our database so we'll select it we'll click on execute so now let's go ahead and let's see if our table has been created successfully so i'll just simply write here select steric from and then i'll write here the table name which is essentially car info okay so now i'll select it i will execute it and here you can see that i could see the table fields but i see no data here and the reason is that because I have not added any data, I just have created a table with fields. So let's go ahead and let's try to add some of the data. So in order to add the data, you have to write a query here. You can write here insert into and then you can write here the table name, which is essentially car info. And then you once you write here car info, which is the table name, then you're going to write here values. OK. So you type in here values, okay, outside of the parentheses, and then inside of the parentheses, you're gonna give values in the sequence. So the ID is integer, so let's say one comma, and then we give the name, which could be like BMW or something like that. And then we can give the model, which could be E series or like L series or something like that. And then we can, give here the car price which could be 150,000 or, or something like that okay once we have done that after that we just go ahead and we run this query and this kind of data would be inserted into our table and here you can see that it was successful so now let's go ahead and let's see uh, if we have that in our table and here you can see that now we have added the data into our table successfully the id is one the the car name is bmw the car model is like e-series 
don't quote me on that if it's just random okay i'm not sure if bmw has e-series or not and then we have this car price which is 150000 okay so now let's quickly copy this command or copy this line and let's quickly add two three more values into this table okay so i'll just uh, slightly change them and then i would basically uh, show you how to delete that as well so once we have done that now i'll just basically select it and i'll execute it and then i'll execute the table okay and then i'll be able to see the results so now we have two fields in our table okay so now i'll show you that how you can delete any of the data from your table so in order to delete the value from a table um, you just need to write a query okay so you write here uh, delete and then you write here from and then you write here the table name which is essentially core info and then you write here where which basically implies towards a condition so where and then i'll write here the id uh, which is cid and then i write here equals let's say one what this line would do it would delete the first row so the query it says delete from cars info which is delete keyword is pretty much you know self-explanatory so it would delete from the cars info the table where the cid equals one so it would go ahead this query and it would search your database and it would try to match the id which is one and whatever it would find against the id one it would delete the entire row so that's how the deletion works so we have selected the query now we'll execute it we'll go there we'll click here and now here you can see that it says successfully one row affected which means that we have successfully deleted the row so the only way is to go ahead and run the table the select static from cars info and here you can see that we have the uh, cid 10 audi and uh, this is the only record that has remained here and the bmw record with icid1 has been deleted successfully so you can also update a value in one of your record using this query so for that you just have to write here update and then you're going to write here the table name which is essentially uh, car info and then you write here set and then you write here the exact field name that you had defined for the table so for example if i want to change the name so i'll write here c name and then i'll write here equal sign and then in the single quotes i'll write a new name like mercedes uh, and once i write here mercedes and it's it is going to replace the audi right so we're going to write here where of course because we have a condition here and the only thing unique here is the cid so we identify the record with the id so we write here cid equals 10. so now uh, what this query would do that it would go ahead update cars info cars info is the table it identifies it and then it goes to set c name uh, it identifies the field which is c name essentially there and it set that specific field to mercedes but first it finds the id so where cid equals 10 it goes into the table okay which is cars info and it looks for the cid 10 and once it finds it then it sets the value of the c name to mercedes from audi so now we are all done so let's just go ahead and let's run this query and now one row affected go ahead and let's see uh, run the table query we execute it and here you can see that the record has been successfully updated from audi to mercedes so this is how you install the microsoft sql server um, and this is how you create a database in it uh, this is how you create a table in it and this is how you delete uh, and update the data inside the table. We have also shown you how to create a primary key. So if you want to see the table manually, just go here, click on the database folder, and then click on the cars database. And here uh, you will see a folder of tables, open it. And here you would be able to see this cars info table. So if you double click on it, you would be able to see the columns, you would be able to see the keys, the constraints, triggers 
uh, indexes and statistic. So that's it from this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to help you advance your IT career. See you in another video.